I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at the step sequencer within Logic Pro 10.5. What we have a chance to do with the step sequencer is to create beat patterns or melodic sequences, and then to start doing some really interesting things in terms of their playback and the way that uh, those individual events or sequences can be controlled. And we're going to see exactly how that works in a couple of instances here. So what I've done is to load a sound set for Drum Machine Designer a drum kit called Neon. And what I can then do within live loops is to control click this first um, clip. And what I can do is to create a pattern cell. And the moment I do that, what I can do when I double click here is to open up the step sequencer, which appears down here at the bottom of uh, the display. And you can see that by default, Logic is gonna create a 16 step sequence. I can change that if I want to, to create a shorter or longer sequence, but I'm gonna stick with 16 for now. And then what we can see is the individual instrument names that have been assigned to this particular sequence. And in order to create a pattern, it's no more complicated than putting uh, the scene into play and then to build a pattern in real time simply by clicking wherever you want an event to take place. Let's do that now. So the moment I click this scene start, you can see that the step sequencer is running, showing me the sort of progress through the sequence. And what we can then do is to build a pattern in real time very quickly. Okay, so, so far, so straightforward. I've just clicked on an individual cell to start building a pattern. What I can also do if I want to is simply just drag across a series of cells from left to right to create a running sequence of notes. And as we've already seen, if I want to interrupt this pattern in some way, I can simply just click to punch a few holes wherever I don't want individual notes to happen. Let's just try something like that instead. Okay, so that's really straightforward so far. Now what we can see looking around the interface a little bit is that not only do I have an opportunity to input notes in particular areas, what I can also do is to control some other things about this sequence. So for instance, at the moment you can see that the global um, playback mode is forwards. This little arrow here is showing me and you can see it mirrored through every single um, instrument that basically as the sequence plays, it's going to play forwards. But what we could do if we want to is to take an individual cell and maybe reverse that. So I'm going to take the hi-hats and they're going to play backwards. And what we'll see is that the individual cell now, as it plays, this one will track uh, in, uh, in reverse, whereas the others will all keep moving forwards. Okay, and you can see that what I've done there is to select forwards and backwards mode for this hi-hat pattern as well. Now, there are loads of other things that we can do with step sequencing. This is just throwing a beat loop together very, very quickly. But in addition to what we can do with beats, what I find particularly interesting about the step sequence is how much further we can go when we start working with melodic instruments. Now, what I've done here is to load a synth sound, airy picks from... Um, uh, from RetroSynth. And what I'm going to do here is to create a pattern cell for this um, instrument as well so that we're ready to put a step sequence together. And what we're going to do now is to start working melodically and looking at some of the more extended features that exist within um, Step Sequencer for all instruments, drum machines certainly, but also for melodic instruments too. So straight away, what I'm going to do is to open up this little inspector here. And what this allows me to do is to create some sort of global choices about the sequence that I'm going to work on. 
to start with, at the moment, you can see that whenever I load a melodic instrument, you can see that a scale has been selected for me. These notes here show an octave from C2 through to C3. And of course, I can change these individually. I can come into notes and choose what I want this to be. I could select a C, but maybe take it up to C4 so that any notes added here would be triggered an octave higher. Or over here within this main inspector area, I can choose a scale. Let's say I want to work in G. And then what I want to do is to choose maybe natural minor and what that's going to do is to choose my scale for me. And of course, what I can then do, as I did with the drum machine, is to go through and create some steps. Okay, so what I've got now is this step sequence that I've put together and we can hear that play through. You can see by the way that I've added a little bit of delay on an auxiliary which is where we're getting these echoes from. Let's hear this sequence. Okay, now this is where some of this sort of direction um, control really starts to come into its own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep running this through and what we're going to do is to experiment both with forwards, backwards, forwards and backwards and random mode, which of course is going to start introducing completely random steps within the sequence. And we're going to very quickly get used to how this sequence sounds as I've programmed it, but we're going to begin to see how it can start really moving on and becoming much more interesting the moment we start changing directions and speed and doing various other things too. Let's just begin to see what that sounds like when we get going. Okay, so we've now got an understanding of how each individual row can behave, but we can go much, much further than this as well. What we've got here um, is an opportunity to select a series of uh, individual parameters, which we can then apply an offset to for each individual step. Let's start with something straightforward. Let's suppose I decide I'm going to select the octave um, option. What this immediately does is to allow me to go through on a note by note basis and to create an octave offset for an individual step and you can see that as I drag through here I can take it up four octaves or three or two um, so what I can do is I can just select a few little things I'm going to turn off the MIDI out tracker for a moment just so we don't hear these changes as they are made and what I'm going to do is just introduce a few little um, octave offsets here and there just to make the pattern a little bit more interesting um, by just introducing a few little immediate offsets from that perspective let's see what that sounds like Okay, what I've done now is to select note repeat. What this allows me to do is to take an individual cell like this one here and break it up into a series of individual little divisions. So in other words, this original note is now going to get split into four separate pieces. Sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that I've introduced that feature either using four or two, or in one case, 16 separate individual notes. So we get this kind of really interesting glitchy effect um, as the sequence plays through. 
So now we've got a little bit of note repeat happening as well. However, some of these notes are really sticking out. One thing I could do potentially would be to change the velocity of individual stages as well. So at the moment, all of these notes are exactly the same value from a velocity point of view. And what I can do is just to offset a few of these again, just so we get a little bit of variation. And I can zip through and do this very quickly just to sort of show you what the sort of audio result of doing that is. And uh, then we get this. The next parameter I'm going to show is the fact that at the moment, obviously, even though some notes, some lanes are playing forwards or backwards, they're all still playing over 16 steps. So it might be quite interesting if we really want something a bit more polyrhythmic would be to take an individual lane and maybe take it down a few steps. And in fact, we could do that in a few instances so that, of course, each time it repeats, it's missing out a step. And what that means is that every time the sequence plays round, it's going to be slightly different. We could keep some playing back over 16 steps and others maybe over 8 or 10 or 11 or something um, unusual. And of course, every time we select a different offset, each lane is now playing back effectively at its own speed, meaning it's going to be different every time. <laughs> Now, we're scratching the surface of what's possible. Step Sequencer allows us to take individual parameters within RetroSynth. Maybe we could take the cutoff frequency and create a lane for that. We've only begun to scratch the surface of uh, all of the options within here as well. We can create ties, obviously additional notes. We can change gate times, uh, the start offset. We can, um, we can do that as well so that effectively each um, lane starts from a little further on each time. It's really worth experimenting with this. Um, and you can begin to see that, of course, step sequencing is going to be something that has a whole range of potential um, sort of musical usefulnesses. We can uh, try with a whole range of uh, bass lines and melodies and beat loops to create some really interesting evolving um, sequences. Let's just hear what these two sound like together now that we've got our two sequences side by side. <laughs> So even though we put something together really quickly, I think you'll be able to see that um, we could get lost in step sequencing for hours, just beginning to play with some of these parameters, applying them to different sounds and creating these really immersive, interesting sort of musical ideas. <laughs> 